after and all the pats on the back. So glad that you're here. Um, we are in the middle, we're kind of at the end now of Missions Impact Weekend. Um, I'm so excited about missions, Brother William, I've, I brought my passport with me. I'm ready, get, give me a plane, put me on a plane, let's go, let's, let's go on missions. I, I had this, we, I, I got to teach the uh, kids small group today, and we talked about what a refugee was, and we talked about the Ukrainian refugee relief situation. Our kids ask such great questions. Uh, some of you parents, I need to brief you a little bit on some things on the ends because some of your kids are strange. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Uh, welcome. Welcome to Leoma Baptist Church. I'm Pastor David. If you're new here with us, if you're visiting with us today, we want to welcome you. In fact, after the service, if you are a first-time guest, we would love for you to go back to that back corner table. Some of our staff will be there. We've got an actual free gift for you. We want to buy your lunch today. So uh, we would love to give that to you and just kind of know who you are. So please do that. Um, if you have come ready for the missions offering, this is our annual missions offering. We receive it today. We're going to actually put it in this big trunk right here um, at the end of the service. And so uh, we'll have a time where we do that. Um, in a way that's kind of reverent to the Lord. Uh, if you've come ready for your regular offering, you can just put that in the bins on, at the exit doors. And we're thank you. Thank you so much for your support of our church. Um, last night, we had an incredible night here. Saturday night was our missions banquet. Uh, guys, let me tell you something. You all in small groups, you just blew it out of the water. You just went above and beyond. We need to give them a big round of applause. They did a great job. It was incredible. Um, we had some incredible food, for Greek food, Asian food, Italian food, Mexican food. Um, I can't think of all the countries, American. Uh, we had desserts from all over the world. It was fantastic. Y'all did a great job. Our missions team did a great job putting that thing on. So thanks to them. Um, and we have been absolutely blessed by some of the most incredible guests here. Some of them have had to leave. Uh, there's still a few of them here today. Uh, you're going to hear from a couple of them today in our services today. Um, I don't know about you, um, I can't, I can't be quiet about my Lord, amen? amen. I, I don't think y'all heard me. I, I can't be quiet about what Jesus Christ has done for me, amen? amen. Yeah, there you go, that is a whistle, a shout, a fist bump or something, yeah, I love that. And so let's stand, let's, let's pray together, let's welcome the Holy Spirit into this place, let's ask Jesus to just bless us and encourage us today. You're going to hear a great word from the Lord. You're going to hear about a lot of mission opportunities you can be involved with. Let's pray and let's sing. God, we thank you so much for allowing us to, to not that you need us, Lord, oh, but God, you want us to be your hands and feet. You want us to be salt and light in this dark world that we live in. And God, we, we thank you for this weekend. We thank you for the mission opportunities that we've heard about. And God, we thank you for the opportunity you can use this church and each of us as individuals to be a part of spreading the gospel in our Jerusalem, our Judea, our Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. So God, we just can't be quiet about what you've done for us. We can't be quiet, Lord, about your love and your grace and your mercy that you have showed toward us. So Lord, today, will you speak to us? Will, we, will you open up our hearts and minds to maybe what you would want us to do above and beyond what we're already doing? God, will you open up recesses of our minds and hearts, Lord, that maybe haven't been opened in a while? And God, help us to give to you all that we have. So Lord, we love you. And all God's people said, Amen. Let's pray. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, He holds the victory. Yeah. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. 
We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, we shout out your praise. He's a God who heals. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross, then he rose up from that grave. My God still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, we shout out your praise. We were the beggars. We were the beggars. Now we're royalty. We were the prisoners. Now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted. Redeemed by His grace, let the house of the Lord sing praise. Sing that again. We were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. No. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, we shout out your praise. We shout out your praise, oh, we shout out your praise, we shout out your praise, amen. Go ahead and have a seat. Hello to all. My name is Aurel Gacian, pastor of the Church of Baptist Bethel in Tulcea, Romania. My name is Aurel Gacian, I'm a pastor of the church in uh, the Baptist Church in Tulcea, in Romania. I want to salute the Church of Leoma and Pastor David. And uh, dear Church of Leoma and uh, dear Pastor David, I'd like to greet you. May the grace of God and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Uh, mă bucur să vă pot saluta uh, și să puteți celebra o nouă ocazie de a vă pregăti anul acesta pentru misiunea anului 2023. Uh, it is my joy to greet you as you prepare for a new missions year for this year of 2023. Sunt mulțumitor lui Dumnezeu pentru faptul că ne cunoaștem de ani de zile, frate pastor. We are so thankful, I'm personally thankful, uh, that uh, we have uh, come to know each other, dear Pastor David, for so many years. And of course, we are here in the, as, a, as a church, we are very grateful for the partnership that we've been able to build together with your church. Se împlinește un an de când s-a declanșat războiul în țara vecină în Ucraina. It, uh, it has now been uh, one, e- one full year since uh, the war in our neighboring country in Ukraine has started. 
Și lucru pe care vrem să uh, îl aducem și îl aducem înaintea Domnului cu mulțumire. And uh, the thing that we do want to bring before our Lord uh, and before God with thankfulness este să recunoaștem ajutorul lui Dumnezeu prin biserica din Leoma. We recognize the, the help that the, the church in Leoma has been in these times. Uh, în primul rând în rugăciune, first of all in uh, prayers, și în al doilea rând financiar și cu toată dragostea. And secondly financially with all the love that you have shown to us. Într-o, într-o situație delicată, dificilă pentru credincioșii și necredincioșii din Ucraina. In a very delicate and difficult situation for both the believers, of course, but also the non-believers in our neighboring country. Voi ne-ați ajutat să fim o mână de ajutor pentru cei care aveau nevoie de adăpost, mâncare și mângâiere. You have uh, helped us to be a helping hand and God's hands and feet uh, for those who needed uh, either shelter or food. Uh, or any kind of other help uh, in these times of need. Microbuzul pe care l-am putut uh, primi prin uh, bunăvoința voastră. The van that we were able to purchase also through your uh, your help, financial a fost, help. A fost și continuă să fie o unealtă pe care Dumnezeu o folosește pentru ajutorarea multor ucrainieni. Has been and continues to be a, a very useful tool as we uh, continue to help transport goods and people uh, transport goods across the, across the border. Zeci de transporturi au uh, fost și vor continua să fie îndreptate spre zona aceasta în plin război. We've now done over a dozen uh, transports over the border uh, and we will continue to do so uh, as long as it's needed to help the, the people in Ukraine. Mulțumim uh, frate David pentru vizita pe care ne-ai făcut-o în toamna anului trecut. We thank you so much brother David for the visit that you paid to us last year in October. Uh, in October. A fost cu adevărat o vizită pastorală. Truly a pastoral visit. Și mulțumim lui Dumnezeu pentru că El te-a folosit. And we are thankful to God because He used you. Ai adus mângâiere celor întristați. You cared for those who were mourning. Încurajare celor deznădăjduiți. You encouraged those who were in despair. Și învățătură și direcție celor care aveau nevoie să cunoască voia Domnului și mai ales să se bucure de Domnul. And uh, you brought encouragement and uh, uh, biblical teaching to those who wanted to uh, to keep fresh, to stay fresh in the Lord. Mulțumim pentru că vizita biserica ți-a permis să fii cu noi și să celebrezi în România o zi a recunoștinței înaintea Domnului. And we are thankful that the church has allowed you to spend the Thanksgiving Day with us uh, that, and we, uh, uh, we had the opportunity to rejoice on that day together. Ne rugăm lui Dumnezeu ca și în acest an Dumnezeu să te folosească. And we continue to pray that also this year God will continue to use you. Să te folosească și în Leoma, dar și în Tulcea. In Leoma as well as here in Tulcea. Împreună cu frații și surorile care vor fi gata să te însoțească. Together with the brothers and sisters who will be ready to join you as you travel here. Având în vedere bucuria copiilor. And as we look forward to bring joy to children. Încurajarea și maturizarea credincioșilor. To encourage and to edify believers. Și în același timp, chemarea la mântuirea celor care sunt încă nesalvați. And also call to salvation those who still need, are in need of it. Ne rugăm ca Dumnezeu să vă binecuvinteze în acest Mission Weekend. May God bless you during this Missions Weekend. Și ne dorim din toată inima ca Dumnezeu să vă facă parte de călăuzire. And uh, we uh, hope that God will give you His guidance and His direction. Să vă bucurați în voia lui Dumnezeu așa cum este din partea Domnului pentru voi. May you rejoice in His will that as, as he, disco- uh, he shows it to you. Să puteți folosi resursele de care Dumnezeu vă oferă disponibilitate. May you use uh, wisely the resources that He gives to you. Și să vă dea har și biruință în slujirea Lui. And may He give you grace and uh, victory as you serve Him. Dumnezeu să vă binecuvinteze cu toată puterea și dragostea Lui. May God bless you with all His power and His love. Bye. Bye. Well, greetings from White Bird, Idaho to Leoma Baptist Church. This is Pastor Randy Meyer speaking. And as that little banner behind me says, love one another, I just want to share my appreciation and my love for all the folks at Leoma Baptist Church, how they have blessed my church 
bless the community with all that they've done in the past few years, the vacation Bible schools that you've done, the uh, work that you've done on the church. Last year, a group came out and replaced the flooring in the parsonage. And then just a week or so ago, a team came out and put new flooring down in the fellowship hall. We'll see if you can... I always get this backwards, so I'm going to turn this around so you can see the work that they did. They replaced the 30-year-old rug carpet with beautiful-looking flooring. They hit the ground running, and they just worked their tail ends off uh, to bless us. And as you can see on the board there, the message that we have, that you have in this missions fair is that Jesus loves not just me, but loves the whole world. The Bible tells us that. And your pastor, David, your church has been faithful to proclaim that. It proclaims that message all over the world and how we appreciate and love that and join you in sharing that message with our community. We pray that together that we'll see souls saved, we'll see people baptized and begin to grow in the Lord. The time is short, and we need to be about the business of telling the world about Jesus. So God bless you. I pray you have an awesome mission conference, and may the Lord continue using you in so many different ways. God bless. Amen. Amen. I thought you would want to hear from our mission partners in Romania and Idaho and uh, be in prayer for those churches. Um, you know, this is the kind of the one year anniversary of the war in Ukraine that Russia has attacked Ukraine. We, we've I've told you about how we've helped with the refugee relief effort there um, that continues to wage on. And so we're going to continue to do that in the next year. Um, and uh, when we dismiss the service today, when I say our last amens, we're going to show another video. And you might just want to stick around and, and watch that. It's about three minutes long. It just shows some pictures of what that church has been doing to help the refugees coming from Ukraine into Romania. Um, and you could actually see some of the damage that it's done. They've gone into Ukraine a couple of times. You can see some of the damage that the bombs have done. We need to be praying for those folks. We, we, we live in a country we, most of you didn't worry about this morning when you woke up if a bomb was going to go off in Lawrence County. Um, those folks in Ukraine are living in that fear. So let's be continual in prayer um, for our prayer partners. Um, let me kind of, I want to introduce our speaker today, and then I'm going to do an interview, um, but uh, bef before she comes, I want to introduce Brother uh, William Burton. He's become a good friend of mine. William works for the Tennessee Baptist Mission Board, and he's going to be preaching the sermon today, and it's a sermon you are not going to want to miss. It is an incredible word of God. Thank you, Brother William, for being here. He's kind of what he, saw, he calls himself, uh, the, uh, you know, our missionary for the state of Tennessee, and he truly is that. He oversees kind of the church plants, especially the ethnic groups all over Tennessee, and you'll hear a little bit more about that from him a little bit later. William, thank you for being here. He's brought a young man he's mentoring, Andrew Gardner, and he, he spoke to our youth today. You, you youth enjoy Andrew today? Huh? Okay. There's, there's seven of them that did. Okay, that's good. All right. Andrew, thank you for being here. It's good to see a young man at 17 years old, passionate about Jesus and passionate about mission work. Um, and so we're gonna, I'm going to interview some, one of our other guests in just a minute, and then we're going to sing another song, and then William, I'm going to ask you to come and speak. Nikki, I want you to come up here. Nicole Miller, y'all give Nicole Miller a good Leoma welcome. Um, I'm going to give you this microphone. Um, Nicole is, uh, she works for the Lawrence County Substance Abuse Program Coalition. Um, some of you have maybe seen that before. Tell us what that exactly is, Nicole. Um, so it's Lawrence County Substance Abuse Prevention Coalition. We've been around for, I'm going to hold this That's closely. good, thank you. You're doing good. Um, we've been around for about six and a half years. Um, the first four to five, we were primary prevention, which was where we got to go in and do education pieces in the school. So with the last three years, we were able to take on two new grants. One was through the TBI Tennessee Alliance for Drug Endangered Children, which is my grant um, for um, 
Lawrence County. There's only seven of me in the state of Tennessee, but because we were boots on the ground, getting out there, finding the missing pieces in our county, we were able to prove that that needed to be a full-time job, and we're able to put six more out there in six wow. other coalitions. The other grant that we have is the Tennessee Lifeline. That is our hybrid lifeline coordinator. Her sole purpose is finding rehab facilities for people, whether they have insurance or they might not, so we need to find a grant bed. But then also the mental health facilities as well. Her and I do a lot of work together because sometimes helping these children means we help their parents heal. Because you're talking about generational chains that our, our law enforcement is seeing like fourth and fifth generations wow. here. So. Wow. So when you mentioned that kind of your specialty is the drug endangered children, that's what you do. Yes. Tell us a little bit about, I mean, some of us here in Lawrence County, we kind of get tunneled vision sometimes. We go to our schools, we go to our workplaces, we go to our churches. And we don't think about the drug problem here. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yes. So with my grant, I have to turn in data every month. Um, I'm not good with numbers, but a lot of people like numbers. So <laughs> one of those partnerships is a number. I'm going to throw a few numbers out there for you, and you guys tell me if you can guess it. Um, 143, 156, 142, and we've never went below 123, and that was just during COVID. Um, but it's been as high as 163. Does anybody have a guess what that might be? That's how many children we have in foster care just in Lawrence County. Murray County wow. and Giles County, their numbers compared don't even touch what we have. Um, we're 11th in the state of Tennessee. We're number one in the South Central region. And I like to blame that on two factors, a mm -hmm. pro and a con. The con is the drug epidemic. We are in a huge raging time of fentanyl, wow. polysubstance, um, alcoholism, everything under the sun you can think of. Um, and we actually, we're seeing more and more that we have children addicted to vaping by the time they even get to high school. I mean, we just had an elementary school that confiscated a vape off of a first grader. Okay? Wow. So, um, and you know, fun fact too, let me say this one. I didn't get to say this in the early service. Our coalition partners with the Department of Tennessee to put out a survey into all of the schools to get feedback to see where we can um, excel a little bit better on what we're doing good, what we, what, what, what we can come together as a community to do. And on that survey, it's nobody knows, they get to answer it honestly, however the case may be. We have kids that have admitted to doing meth at 10 years old in wow. Lawrence County. So wow. that sounds like a generational problem to me, that's because right. why would that's they right. think that that's so mm. easy and okay? Um, so my job as a debt coordinator is to plug into our county. We're different from other counties. What's working for Dixon County might not work for us. So it's just to find the missing pieces to help these children and their families heal. Um, and then the other fact of the matter of why I think our numbers are so high, and this is just, yeah, this one doesn't lock me. Thank you. <laughs> we have this problem. This one doesn't either. It's going to be good. They'll turn it up. They'll turn it up. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Keep going. There we go. For those that were in the small group, you know the social awkwardness I was talking about. <laughs> You're doing great. You're doing fine. You're doing great. <laughs> the second problem, which I don't think this is a problem, is, is we have Magistrate Duncan, who actually works hand-in-hand -in, -hand in this Grace House project I'm fixing to talk about. She doesn't play around. She knows that to help these children heal, we have to help their parents heal. So she yeah. helps them find services and works with DCS. And I can honestly say Magistrate Duncan gets in there and gets messy with these kids too. She's let us revamp the vape program that helps these kids and gets to the common core of certain issues in their mental health. Amen. It's so good to hear because this is, this is a messy situation. It is messy. And, and I love the fact that we've got people like Nicole Miller in our county, in our community, getting down and getting your hands and feet dirty for the cause of, of helping kids. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Grace House. I, I know that we have several people in our church that work for uh, Department of Child Services. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we all know the problem. The problem is sometimes these kids that are taken out of drug endangered homes are sometimes not being able to be placed immediately into a home. They're sometimes having to sleep on a cot in mm -hmm. an office somewhere in the stagnant kind of office. Mm -hmm. Talk about what Grace House is doing to kind of curtail that. So Grace House, um, I'm trying not to fall underneath any grants because I want it to be designed right. specifically for Lawrence County. Um, and then hopefully maybe we can branch out and live on other communities and counties as well. But 
Grace House not only will love on the children as they come through the DCS, whether it be CPS or law enforcement mm-hmm. even, um, I also want it to be a moment that we love on the caseworkers as well because when children mm-hmm. have to stay the night at DCS's office, there are two caseworkers that have to stay on site with them at all times, running six-hour shifts, sometimes eight wow. hours. So you think when you're having to stay up round the clock, You've missed your child's ball game. You're having to sleep there. And then you wake up and you take a caseload where technically you're supposed to have a six to eight hour day, but you've just put in 10 hours. Uh, Can you imagine the depletedness and the being spread thin? So we're working on a team of vetted volunteers by DCS that have background checks that can take one of those spots because a caseworker has to stay there at all times the other thing we're working on is a food train because when they're staying there for multiple nights on end we want them to be able to have a warm meal if um, a volunteer's not there to cook it or however and you know it may not be that you are on either one of those teams but you want to donate a gift card because we can go out and we can get a meal fast because some of these things are in the middle of the night and last minute the yeah. other thing that I love about Grace House that we're trying to do is is that when children leave us, they will leave with a backpack with age-specific needs to help knock the edge off, whether it be their foster home or their next-to-kinship placement, because we were a next-to-kinship placement. We were the glorified babysitters, right? So when we took our baby on, we didn't get that extra help and that extra money. And we were paying $500 a month in daycare. Wow. Um, she had developmental delays, so I was taken off work for OT, PT. Developmental therapy came to my house once a week. And that that's heavy. Mm-hmm. You have grandparents that are raising kids that they're not going to see any of that stuff. So. Yeah something as simple as a food box and a hygiene box and even the laundry detergent because even that laundry detergent that's advertised for 80 percent water is still expensive right so So a couple things i heard there nicole i think our church needs to hear is that i don't know if you heard that but they're looking for volunteers Mm -hmm. Um, it's as easy as a three-hour training yes you could be a volunteer to help with a kid to be there at their time of crisis, to love them, to help get them bathed and fed yes. and a place for them to sleep. So that's maybe something that God is stirring some of your hearts to, to do. Tell us a little bit more too about, I mean, I know that you've had a million God stories in this and you, you're just kind of getting your hands and feet dirty in this. Tell us a couple of those God stories that of just life change that you have experienced in doing what you do. So I'll tell the one that I told in my small group. Sorry, guys, you're going to hear this one again. But I love it the most. I didn't get to share it earlier. But this was actually before Grace House even got to open its doors completely. But we had a bathroom that we just got remodeled. And we were able to let them utilize that. Because when you're at the DCS office, you don't get a shower as frequently as what you want. Um, The same little boy, I had saw him at 4th of July when what were you guys doing on 4th of July weekend? Watching fireworks, picnicking. Watching fireworks, yeah. eating. Like I was sick to my stomach because I couldn't even handle the fact that there was caseworkers missing their families mm-hmm. and a kid there that he was angry and had an attitude because he hadn't had a bath in four days. Wow. He was happy that he had actually gotten one. So I don't know about you, but I would have had a major attitude too. Amen. That's so right. with that... He was able to start coming to Grace House and get a bath when we got that done. And so the caseworkers and I, we've bonded, and they they know me, and they know where I stand on certain things. And apparently, um, while I was gone, he had made a bunch of God comments. He he had made the comment he hated hated God. Um, So anyways, I get back. And he was working, and words of affirmation go so far because he was helping me get some stuff together for Grace House. He felt like he was doing a part, so he was really opening up and talking to me. And so the caseworker said, he said, why don't you you tell Miss Nikki what you just said? And he was like kicking his shoe, and he was like, no, I don't want to. And I was like, it's okay, no judgment here. Talk to me. You're not going to surprise me on anything. And he said, so he comes defensively, right? Because that's what he knows. I was like, first off, I'm going to need you to tone that thug talk down because I can't handle all that. (laughs) We don't talk like that. So he said, no disrespect, Miss Nikki. He said, but how can you expect me to believe in a God when look what I've had to deal with in my life? Wow. Look where I've been. I don't even have a mama. I don't have a daddy. And I don't even know where I'm going to be at this week. Wow. And in that moment, I was like, "Just, just let me speak grace. Let me speak grace. And I said, you're right. You're right. I can see where you're coming from on that note. And I'm really trying to get through this without crying, okay? 
But I looked at him and I said, am too. <laughs> yeah, my, my, my uh, little group, they got it earlier. <laughs> but I said, you know what? Benefit of the doubt, you have every right to feel like that. And I said, I'm going to pray so hard one day that you get to see and know Jesus and know that this world is temporary. Amen. When you meet God and you seek him, you're going to know that you're always going to have a father. You're always going to have somebody to love you. And Amen. you're always going to have a friend. And I said, but let's just say, just like I argued with an atheist one time, well, I'm not going to argue because I'm just not going to do that. I said, it's not my job to beat you over the head with the Bible. It's not my job. My job is to pray for you. And my job is to pray that you seek that and find that on your own. Yeah. So I said, let's just say, let's entertain it, that you're right. You're right, I'm wrong. It's okay. I said, what do I have to lose if you're right? But what do you have to lose if I'm right? Mm. Either way I go, I'm a win-win. But you, what do you have to lose if you don't believe and you find out that Jesus is real? Amen. Wow. And he just looked at me and, and he, he just, the rest of the day he was cleaning and he was so quiet because those wheels were turning. And I said, I'm really sorry that life has treated you the way it's treated you. You're right. You don't deserve that. You don't deserve to know what that's like and have to grow up before your time. You get to deserve to be a kid. Wow. So. Wow. And this is kind of the stories you deal with every day. Yeah. Nicole wears many hats. She, she's not only um, a part of the Drug Endangered Kids and Grace House, but she's also on the board of directors for Hope Haven, which is our newest, uh, the new pregnancy center here in Lawrence County, which was desperately needed. Um, and so uh, we could talk about that for hours, but I mean, mm -hmm. obviously we're, we're trying to fight for life, amen? And that's what we're doing. Absolutely. And so uh, I, I love Nicole's part in that. Listen, here's what I want you guys to do. Um, I want you to pray for Nicole. Um, I know she's got a booth downstairs mm -hmm. still up. After the service, I encourage you to go downstairs. She's even got a water bottle that she'll give you. It's got it full of all kinds of information she can use as a water bottle that will kind of talk about all that she's talking about today. There's some Hope Haven um, and, and Grace House brochures down there. You can read about that. Guys, uh, I don't know if you know this or not, but our, our missions team was so proactive. We've already put Grace House and Hope Haven in our budget. We're going to support that financially. That's what we should be doing Thank as a church. You. Thank and you. And so, um, and Nicole, we want to pray for you. Absolutely. We, we want to pray you. for you as, as you're just, you're getting your hands and feet and your life and your family dirty for the cause of Christ. Thank you for what you're doing for Hearts County. Amen. Thank um, you for everything. Yeah. So I, I just want to, I want to have a prayer. Uh, for Nicole, and then the band's going to come and lead us in one more song, and then William, I'm just going to ask you to come when they're finished and preach. Let's pray. God, I want to lift up my friend and my sister in Christ, Nikki. Um, Lord, thank you for what she does here in this county. Thank you for the lives that she's touching, like that young man who just really was just angry at you for what has gone on in his life. And God, this, these are the kids, these are the families that Nikki is kind of diving into and, and in a very raw way, kind of just trying to infiltrate Jesus into their lives. So God, will you just find favor um, on the Lawrence County Substance Abuse Program Coalition and all that they do with drug and danger kids? Will you find favor with Grace House? God, will you find favor with Hope Haven? God, will you just, will you just kind of bless those ministries and Lord, bring the resourcing and the money and, and the, the things that they need to make that as effective and as useful as possible. Lord, I believe there's somebody here today. Maybe there's somebody listening online. Maybe there's somebody out in the congregation today that says, you know what? I can't do much, but you know, I can make a meal. I could take a three hour training. I, I, I could, I could show up and I could, I could be there at night while a kid sleeps and just has a safe place to be and lay his head. So God, will you, will you stir our hearts today? God, will you move and work in our midst? And in those days where Nikki just feels like, am I making an impact? Is anything going right? God, will you just wrap her up? with your arms of grace and peace and mercy and love and just say, yes, you are making a difference. And Lord, for each of us here today, God, will you allow us to help us understand how we can make a difference, how we could give our all for you. God, we pray this all very boldly and confidently and expectantly in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Nikki. Love you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Y'all stand. Let's pray.
forever be glorified. Lord, we want to be obedient to you, to serve you, to, to walk with you, to be your hands and feet, to see that kingdom come, to see your work be done in the city and in every nation, to every tribe and every tongue. We love you, and we can only do this by your strength, your power, and with you leading us. Thank you, Jesus. In your precious name we all said, amen. Let's have a seat. Well, good morning. What an incredible weekend this has been. I've made some good friends. I've met some folks that uh, uh, I will always remember. And, uh, and I love your pastor, by the way. Your pastor is a friend. Uh, amen. That's it. Man, I like it. Um, your pastor, as you well know, serves on the board of directors for the Tennessee Baptist Mission Board. And he's also the, uh, the, the, the group of directors is divided up into teams, and he chairs the, the, new, church, the new church's team, uh, of which uh, that, that team, as far as the staff side, I lead that. So he and I work together. As a matter of fact, we're doing a retreat, I think, at the end of, the, end of next month, and uh, it's going to be great. We learn from each other, and I just appreciate his heart and his, uh, his spirit and his desire to see our state, the state of Tennessee, and as, of course, uh, the, our nation and world come to know the Lord. So you are blessed to have a great pastor. And obviously, David, man, this is a great church. I mean, a church that, that, that could put on some food like they did last night. You can't go wrong here. Huh? That was, that was great. Thank each one of you for your, your work um, in making this weekend and making all the missionaries feel welcome. Uh, it's just been incredible. It really has. Uh, as, uh, get ready, uh, turn, your, turn in your Bible to Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. We're going to be looking at a, a, an amazing uh, miracle that our Lord Jesus did, and we'll be looking at that in just a few moments. But, you know, as, as we've, we've heard testimonies of things going, around, going on around our neighborhood and our communities and around the world, the needs that exist are somewhat overwhelming for us. You know, I, I'm listening to the testimony from our brother from, the, from, the, from Romania and the, the pouring of refugees into that country as a result of the war uh, and how those ministries are responding and, and the continued. It's been a year now that's been going on. And then even in our own neighborhood, when you, you hear about boys and girls that are being taken from their homes and having to sleep in a in an office someplace on an air mattress. That just shouldn't be happening. And, and then in our state, the state of Tennessee, we have 3,200 Tennessee Baptist churches. Uh, one church for every 2,000 Tennesseans. Uh, we have a saturation of churches. We have lots of churches in our state. But 80% of those churches are either plateaued or declining. As a matter of fact, today... Somewhere in Tennessee, there will be a church that will turn off the lights and lock the doors for the last time. Yet, there, between the next uh, 10 years or so, 500,000 people will move into Tennessee. That's, the, that's a major city. That is a major city over the next, five, the next uh, 10 years or so. And yet... Of the 7 million people that live in the state of Tennessee, according to LifeWay Research, 5 million of them claim no personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Nine out of every 10 high school students in Tennessee have no personal relationship with Jesus Christ. In other words, if there's 1,000 students at your high school, local high school, more than likely 900 of them, according to these statistics, 900 of them would have no relationship with Jesus Christ. And man, I tell you what, I'm, I'm, the, the picture I'm painting is dark. It's a gloom and doom, it sounds like. So what in the world can I do? What in the world can Lo Leoma Baptist Church do? What can I do to make a difference in my community if the needs are so huge? 
When there's 143 different people groups that live in Tennessee and, and, and the 40 of those are less than 2% evangelized worldwide. In other words, they are unreached people groups. And I only speak English. Well, what am I going to do? You know, the disciples were faced with similar situation. You know the story here in, in Mark chapter 6. It's, a, it's an, an amazing miracle. As a matter of fact, let's just look at it and let's read it beginning with verse 34. When Jesus landed, he saw a large crowd. He had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. Now there's a period and there's some time that had passed before the next verse. I don't know how much time, but this is what happens. By this time, it was late in the day. So his disciples came to Jesus, and this is what they said. This is a remote place. And it's getting very late, verse 36. Send the people away so they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. In verse 37, I believe, are some of those piercing words that were ever uttered by our Lord Jesus. And in my Bible, the letters are in red. And this is what Jesus said. You give them something to eat. Now let me let that... Let's think about that. Just set the, ponder on that for just a moment. You give them something to eat. Then they said to him, well, that would take more than a half year's wages. And where are we to go and spend that much on bread and give it to them to eat? Then verse 38, Jesus asked another question. Well, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they found out, they said, five and two fish. And Jesus directed them to have all the people sit down in groups on the green grass. And so they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties. And taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking into heaven, he gave thanks and he broke the loaves. And he gave them to his, the, to his disciples to distribute to the people. He also divided the two fish among them all. And verse 42 says, They all ate and were, I like this word, satisfied. And the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces of bread and fish. And this, for one reason or another, Mark saves this to the last part. And the number, listen to this, and the number of men who had eaten was 5,000. Lord, thank you for your word today. I pray, God, that you would... Speak to our hearts, bless our hearts because we have heard it and read it today. And then, Lord, I pray that you would um, show us what we need to do and how we're to respond. Lord, once again, I ask you to hide this preacher behind the cross. We don't need to hear from a man, but we desperately need to hear from you. So speak because your people are listening today. In Jesus' name, amen. With the needs that exist, what can we do? With the lostness in our world today, what difference can I make? This morning I want to share with you little is much when God is in it. And how you can, four essential steps of what you and actions that you and I can make to impact our world with the good news of Jesus Christ. Because I don't know if you've noticed, our world desperately needs some good news today. Amen. Amen. So here, the first thing we need to do, if we're going to see God take our little and do a whole lot with it, if we must admit, I must admit, I have a problem without a solution. I have a problem without a solution. Now, many of us have problems for which we do have solutions. I have people always coming up to me, Pastor, well, well would, you, would you pray that, uh, that I can lose weight? Well, you, you have a problem with the solution. You need to go on a diet. <laughs> Hello? There's a solution to that. Uh, the, Pastor, would you, would you pray for, uh, I, I, need to, uh, I need to make more money. Well, how many hours a week are you working? Well, I'm just working 10. Well, maybe you need to work more hours. 
Pastor, would you pray? We have solutions to many of our problems, but there are some problems for which we do not have solutions. And the disciples were in that situation. You see, the, uh, there was a group of people, 5,000 men. There could have been up to 20 to 30, 40,000 people gathered together. I don't know, but the Bible says 5,000. I, I like to imagine things and put things to it, but let's just say there's five. They had 5,000 people that were gathered together. Jesus was teaching. It was getting late, and they said to Jesus, hey, send these folks away because we don't have what it takes to meet the need. And normally when we have a problem, a lot of people when they have problems, there's usually three responses. One is that we, we postpone the problem. We just don't want to face it. We look the other way. We stick our head, the ostrich syndrome, we stick our head in the sand. Maybe it'll just go away. I remember when I was pastor in Morristown and there was a little, uh, little girl in our church. She was about uh, four years old, three years old. Or, uh, her name uh, it was Emily, as cute as she could be. And I loved her so much. She was just, I wanted to hold her and hug her. And I loved her mom and dad. And she would see me walking down the hallway. And I'm this big, tall, white guy. And, and she closed her eyes, hoping I would go away. She would not open her eyes. And I just wanted to get a hold of her and hug her so bad, but I knew she was afraid of me. And, and so she was hoping her problem would go away. That's a lot of times what we do. We look the other way. We refuse to recognize there is a problem. And that, I think that's kind of, you know, the sun always goes down about the same time. They, the disciples knew it was getting late. It wasn't anything new. Christmas always comes on the 25th of December. It's not a surprise to us. But they postponed, these disciples postponed what needed to be done. So it gets late, it's too late for them to respond. And they said, here's what the other thing they do. They pass the responsibility to somebody else. And in their, in their subtle, passive-aggressive mannerisms, they come to Jesus and said, you send them away so they can find something to eat. They were kind of indirectly saying, Jesus, this is your fault that they don't have anything to eat. But go ahead and send them. You send them away. Get them out of here. We don't want to tell them to leave. You tell them to leave. Go, go to McDavid's, not McDonald's. They were Jews. So McDavid's and, and, and see if they can find something, to, find something to eat without bacon on it. And so we have that, resp we have that idea. We, we pass the responsibility on to somebody else or the other thing that happens when Jesus kind of pushed them, pushed them a little harder and he said to them, well, what do you have? He said, you give them something to eat. It's not me. You give them something to eat. Well, we don't uh, have enough money. It'd take a half year's wages to feed this crew. And then who's going to get the, the permits from the health department? <laughs> who's going to clean up the mess after it's over with? Uh, who's, they, so... They begin to worry. My friends, I want to tell you something. We are in a position, we are in a point today in our state, I've already mentioned. Listen, there is no time, there is no opportunity. We don't have the luxury of postponing it or passing the responsibility or just becoming worried and wringing our hands. We must act today. Today in Tennessee, over half of your neighbors don't know the Lord. We have just, just a few, ro few hours down the road here, about a, a 40 miles from Memphis, an amazing opportunity for us. It's called Blue Oval City. I mentioned this last night. Pastor asked me about it this morning in our small group. Blue Oval City will be the largest automobile manufacturing uh, plant in the world. It will, listen to the footprint of Blue Oval City, that's the Ford Motor Plant. They're going to build the Ford F-150 Lightning battery-operated trucks. I know that sounds like an oxymoron, a battery-operated truck, but that's what they're building. It, it, it is so big, there are going to be 10,000, there will be 10,000 people working in the plant and support plants around us. When the, when the dust settles and the pavement has dried and the houses are built, this will become possibly the eighth largest city in the state of Tennessee. And it is a spiritual desert there right now. Only a couple of churches together, they run about, they run less than 100. And the world is coming to us. We do not have time to wait on somebody else to do it. 
We don't have time to wait on somebody else to do the grace house. We have to do it. We don't have time to wait on somebody else to go to Romania. We have to do it. We don't have time for somebody else to, to plant a, a church in, in Idaho. We have to do it. Tennessee is our mission field, but the world also is. So we have to admit that we have a problem without a solution. We have a problem without a solution, humanly speaking. But I know one, I know the man that can. I know the one that has the solution. I know the one that can walk on the water. I know the one that can raise the dead. I know the one who can feed the 5,000. Do you know him today? Let me ask you this question. What problem do you have in your life? Without a solution. Give that to the Lord. Ask the Lord to begin to show you what, what you can't. Because if you're trying to fix this thing on your own, you'll never fix it. You will never, you will always have the problem. Postponing it, passing the responsibility, putting off to another day, worrying about it, becoming preoccupied. You're, you're not, you are not looking for the solution for the problem. You're just going to continue with the problem. So what we have to do, we admit we have a problem, but then you take what you have. Take the resources you have. You take what, what God's given you, and you, you give it to, to the Lord. Just give it to God. Surrender to Him. That's what, he, that's what happened here. Look what it says. Look what the Bible says. Jesus asked the question, well, what do you have? They hadn't even found out what they had. They didn't even know what resources. Many times we don't know the resources that we have uh, uh, that are available to us. We don't know what we have in our church. We don't know what perhaps these what talents or abilities we have. We don't even know what we could do if we surrendered to the Lord because we've never surrendered to Him. Listen to this. He said, how many loaves do you have? Go out and see. And these well, we've got five, five and two fish. And, and so somebody, now this, uh, this account of this, and one of the other synoptic gospels talks about a little boy. He had the, he had the fish. His mama was, was prepared. She sent her son out with lunch. Now, I just can't imagine. Here's the thing about it. A 5,000 people being there, I can't imagine he was the only little boy, hello, that had a lunch. But he was the only one that was willing to give it. Did you hear what I said? I said he was the only one that was willing to give it. So this little boy surrenders it to Andrew, and Andrew comes back, well, Lord, here it is, but what, it, what good is this among so many people? But in order for God to use your little, you've got to give it to Him. Amen. Now, we'll do that many times. We'll give it to God, but then we'll come back, and I think this burden that I have, this habit that I have, this addiction that I have, this uh, secret sin that I have, I'm going to give it to the Lord, but I think maybe before the service is over with, I'm going to come back by and pick it up. Huh? I think I'm going to, I, I can't live without this one. I'm going to run. Nobody else knows about it. I'm just going to take it back with me. Give it to the Lord, please. Just give it to Him. I promise you. If you'll give whatever you've got, your, your sins, your faults, your failures, your talents, your abilities, your gifts, your resources, your time, your treasure, whatever it is, you give it to the Lord and He'll do something great with it, but you've got to give it to Him. Surrender it. The 5,000 men, nobody gave their lunch, but we're 2,000 years later, we're still talking about that little boy. We're still talking about him. He's the hero of the story. He's the hero of the story. What, what is the little that God has given you that he wants you to give to him? Let me say to you, if you've never trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, the very first thing, look at me, the very first thing that he wants you to give to him is your life. Give him your sin, give it to him, let him have it. He'll take that and he'll turn it around. And he'll do something amazing with it. But give it to him. Here's the other thing. Uh, here's the other thing that happened here. You give to God the little that you have, but then you have to strategically place it someplace. You see, they brought it to, to the disciples. It was given to the disciples. And then the disciples handed it over to the man that can. They put it in the hands of Jesus. So you take your little, give it to God, and put it in Jesus' hands. Because it does no good unless you put it, into, put it into action. Yeah, Lord, I've got, listen, Lord, I have 
this ability. I have this talent. I have this treasure. I have this time. And Lord, you can have it, but until you put feet to it, until you put it to use and put it in the hands of someone that can use you, it does no good. So that's what happened. They gave the five loaves and the the two fish to, to God, and then they placed it in the hands of Jesus. What need do you have in your life that you need to place in the hands of Jesus? What, what, what is it you, that you have in your life that's holding you back that you need to put in the hands of Jesus? What is it that God is saying to you today? You know, right now as I'm speaking to you, things are coming to your mind. Put that in His hand. Give it to the Lord. Put it in His hands. Ask Him to take your faults and your failures, your, your hang-ups. Ask Him to take all of that. And He'll transform and He'll change you. I have a, I, as a pastor said, I am your missionary uh, in, in Tennessee. I've run from Mississippi, from uh, the the river, I'm speaking in Spanish in my head right now, the Mississippi River, El Rio, Mississippi. Um, I, I run from the Mississippi River to Mountain City. That's the south of Vermont. If you've never been to Mountain City, Tennessee, it's the south of Vermont. Uh, and I cover this state. I arrive about 50,000 miles a year. And I see the lostness in this state. I see the addictions, the results of it. I see immigrants and refugees that are just living in the shadows and many of them with no churches no one's reaching them and I, I said Lord I can't do this but here's what I have you know you give your churches amazing uh, this mission offering you're taking you support our golden offering for Tennessee missions which is you know it's the it's what the Lottie Moon Christmas offering is for international missions. That's what Golden Offering is for Tennessee. Our goal by 2024 is to have $3 million a year coming in. And we can spend every bit of that. Tomorrow I could plant 100 churches tomorrow if I had church planters. There's, it's not the lack of places. It's the lack of people. And by the way, Jesus asked, he said, you look at the harvest you see the fields are white. Ask the Lord to send forth labors. The only, look at me, the only prayer request that Jesus ever made was to pray for more laborers. And when you say, here am I, Lord, send me, use me, whatever, how it is, you are a response to the prayer request that Jesus made. Isn't that amazing? 2,000 years ago. But when you have whatever it is you have, and you give it to God and you place it in His hands, the fourth thing we need to do is to wait on the Lord. Now, I don't know about you, but we live in a, we live in a microwave society. I mean, you can, uh, you can take a baked potato and put it in the regular oven and wait 45 minutes, but you can put it in the microwave, and man, in about five minutes, that thing's ready to put some butter on it. And, and, and we're ready to go. We, we can go through, listen, we can go, now you're up from Upper East Tennessee, there's a place up there called Pals. And, and you can go, it's a little old square uh, rectangle building. You walk, you order your food on this side. By the time you get on the other side, it's ready. It's fast. We want, we want our results quickly. And, and our timetable is not always God's timetable. We want it right now. Now, in this case, it happened right now. But sometimes it doesn't happen. Sometimes we have to wait. You, you know, uh, back in the 1990s when with the first Gulf War and Saddam Hussein was trying to destroy the Kurds and uh, uh, eliminate the Kurds in northern Iraq. And he started bombing. We come in and, and this created this refugee crisis. Today in Nashville, Tennessee, the largest population of Kurds, Kurdish-speaking people in the world, outside of the Middle East are in Nashville, Tennessee. Who would have ever thought that? And it, 30 years ago, they started moving in, and we were teaching English and trying to help them find jobs and, and how to adapt to this crazy gringo culture that we have and based on what, where they come from. And, and it just, 
And we're doing the best we can, but they're still lost. And we had a lot of people that were learning English and with their bellies full, but they were dying and going to hell because they didn't know Jesus. And it's, it's taken us 30 years, 30 years, just a year before COVID, we planted the very first Kurdish language church in Tennessee, in Nashville. Praise the Lord for that. But it took 30 years. And what if, what if we'd given up? What if we'd thrown in the towel? What if we said, oh, we've spent enough, we've gone enough, we've, we've said enough, we've worked enough. Perhaps that would have never happened. What if, what if we said, oh, no, we're tired of helping the folks in Romania. What if we say, no, no, and then here we are. This church has an amazing opportunity to impact the, the Ukrainians that are being uh, uh, pushed out of their nation because of a war. Now, I like the, it's an interesting thing. When Jesus said, he asked them how much you have, what do y'all do you have here? And they told him, what was the next thing Jesus did? See, there's a, there's a, there's a preparation here. Before, he, before he, they put it before him, before he picked it up, what did he do? He said, boys, uh, tell the guys to sit down on the green grass out here because we're about to have lunch. Uh, had them sit, they sat down in groups of 150 because we're about to eat. We're going to have dinner on the ground. You know what I'm talking about? Some of you remember when dinner on the ground? We're going to have, we're going to have some, now it was five loaves and, and my goodie bag that I took home last night, somebody made some, I believe that's sourdough bread. Hallelujah. I think, you know, my goodness gracious. And then there's some honey that was in there and some preserves. And I almost ate that last night when I got, after eating everything I ate here, I said, I got to have some of that. Well, we think about five loaves. It's not that big sourdough bread that we had, uh, that you had in my bag last night. Our Greek folks that had that, by the way, those uh, chicken on the stick thing, that was great. You had some pita bread over there. That's about what that was. I had five loaves, five pieces of pita bread and some sardines. That was it. That was all it was. Now, that, make, that ain't much of a dinner on the ground, is it? I want some fried chicken all right, and some cornbread. Have them to sit down. We're about to eat. Then it, here's what happened. You have to wait on the Lord. Jesus took that and he, he took, the, he took the, the bread and he raised it up. And he, I don't know what he said, but he said, Father, for your glory and honor, multiply this. And I, I can't imagine what it was like, but it was in his hands and he prayed. And then all of a sudden, I mean, there was this, uh, this, just a multitude of bread. And the disciples began to distribute that to all those people that were seated around. And before they got that all done, he'd picked up the fish and blessed that. Boys, there's some more. Take this out here. Here's the fish. And they... they distributed the fish and they all ate just barely enough to quench their hunger what's it say they all ate until they were satisfied that's what jesus does has he satisfied you have you been satisfied by christ if you have not been satisfied by christ it's because you've not asked him you've not eaten You've not tasted to see that he is good. He wants to satisfy your need, your heartbreak, the pain. He wants, to, he wants to heal your family. He wants to use you. He'll satisfy you if you'll taste and see that the Lord is good. And so here's what happened. They all ate until they were satisfied. And just as the Lord does, there was more left over. It said after they all ate till they were satisfied, and I imagine they got seconds and thirds like some of us did last night. They gathered up 12 baskets of food. There were 12 disciples. They've been serving the tables. They may have had some food to take home. 12 tribes of Israel. I don't know what all that has to do with it. There are 12 baskets. Now, Pastor, if you'll just, I hope I don't mess anybody's theology up by what I'm about to say, but I'd just like to imagine the little boy. He's back there. He ate some. He got his belly full, too. 
But uh, probably like happened last night, somebody uh, in, in this group, when the Kemp's were getting ready to leave, loaded up two of those big styrofoam uh, trays with dessert. And Brother Anthony said, I just couldn't say no. <laughs> loaded up two of those and put them in a bag and sent them home with it. I, I would just imagine that, that lady that did that last night, there's somebody like her back then. And said, uh, little boy, come over here. I want you to take this home to your mama. I want you to take this home to mama. That's what the Lord does. You know, he gives us more than we give. He blesses us more than we, in, than we ever thought we could bless someone. I, I just can't imagine. I'm just, can you imagine the, the boy's mama when he, got, when, he, when he got to the house? Where'd you get this? How, 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 where'd you get this? Oh, mama, you need to meet this Jesus. Let me tell you about him. Let me tell you what he did with your lunch that you sent me. Let me tell you how the Lord, oh my goodness. Let me tell you how the Lord used your lunch. Amen. Let me tell you something. I can't, I can't help but imagine what it's going to be like when we get to heaven. I can't imagine. I, yeah, I know there's going to be streets of gold. And I know there's going to be glassy sea. And I know there's going to be pearly gates. I know there's going to be walls of jasper. I know it's going to be a place of, of no pain and no sorrow, no sickness and disease. I know all that. But I just can't imagine that perhaps that some walking down the streets of gold, that Nikki, there's going to be some little boy, little girl that's going to run into you and say, you know, I remember. I remember when they took me out of my mama's house and my daddy's house and I was scared to death and I, I, I had a I had a place to go. There was somebody there to hug me and, and prayed for me and taught me, talked to me about Jesus. Man, the love that I felt that night, I've, I've never felt it before and I knew I needed more. And, and because you did this, I'm in heaven. I can't, I can't help but imagine that somebody in Idaho that your church planter there has been ministering to and, and loving on uh, is going to run into you, some one of you, when you get to heaven and say, by the way, that missions offering you gave back in 2023 and the, the money you sent over there to Idaho to help that church plant. And listen to that pastor. He, I, I, I was in a, 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 a terrible situation in my life and he came to me and he shared with me the good news and I met, I met Jesus and I'm in heaven today because you gave. Because the little bit that you gave, you didn't think it was much. But God used it for His glory, and He used it in a great way. I can't help but imagine that when we get to heaven, there's going to be, there's going to be an Afghan refugee that's in Memphis, Tennessee today that we're going to find, we're going to cross paths on the streets of glory. And they're going to, He's going to say to us, thank you for giving to the Lord. Thank you for praying. Thank you for going. I, know, I met Jesus because of that. Don't you ever think that your little is insignificant because it is much, little is much when God is in it. The first thing God wants from you, listen to me. You may think you're not important. Oh, but you are. God desires to have a relationship with you. And the very first thing He wants from you is your heart your life, as frail as you may be, as sinful as you may think you are, if you've never trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, Christ is waiting. He is desirous of a relationship with you. And if you've never trusted Him, you've never repented of your sin, you've never asked Christ to be your Lord, your boss, this morning I want to give you that opportunity to do that. So where you're seated, you may be in elementary school age, you may be a senior adult, I don't know. But if you've never trusted Jesus, I'm going to guide you in a, in a simple prayer. It's not my words, it's, but if my words express the desire of your heart, then you, would you repeat those just to the Lord? Where you're seated, every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. If you know you need to trust Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, give Him your life, your heart, your... Just repeat by faith the words I'm going to share with you right now. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. I've failed you. I've done wrong things. I desperately need your forgiveness. I believe you died on the cross for me and arose three days later. Today, I surrender my life to you. I give you my life. 
I ask you to take control of my life. And today I receive you as my Savior and follow you as my Lord. Please receive me as your child. And I pray in Jesus' name, every head bowed, every eye still closed, no one is looking around. If you prayed that prayer just now with me for the very first time, just for the very first time, would you just glance up here at me and make eye contact with me? If you prayed with me just now, just make sure I see you. Make eye contact with me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. If you prayed that prayer with me just now, just glance up here at me. Thank you. Thank you. In a moment, we're going to sing. Your pastors are going to be down here. They're going to give you some instructions on, on what you need to do. Those that have trusted Christ, those perhaps uh, uh, need to make other decisions. You've got your mission offering, your little that you're going to bring, and ask the Lord to do a lot with it. You just be obedient to what God is asking you to do. Lord, receive glory and honor today in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask our musicians to come on out. And listen, the most important thing beyond the missions offering is where you stand in eternity. So if that's you today, if that's you, if, that's, if, if you're one of those folks that says, you know what, I need, to, I need a personal, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. Pastor Marty and I are going to stand up here. Pastor William will be here as well. We'd love to chat with you. If that's you, we'd love to pray with you. We'd love to let you make that decision. I think there's something special about getting out of your pew, out of where you're sitting, out of your comfort zone, and walking forward. There's nothing magical about that. There's nothing really kind of super biblical about that, but I think it says something. It says, I mean business. You've taken the first step already by kind of making eye contact with Brother William. Why don't you make that second step and make it real? Proclaim it publicly. We'll walk you through that. We'll, 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 I'll tell you, if that happens in our church, when that happens in our church, there's a church congregation that's going to applaud. We're going to celebrate. And for the rest of us, maybe, maybe you've come today and you didn't really know what Mission Impact Weekend was all about. Some of you have come ready to give uh, your offering. You've got one of those envelopes. Uh, you don't have to have an envelope. You can just, if you want to drop $8 million in there, that's okay with me. <laughs> just a quick story. I, I know last year this time, during Missions Week, we got word that Russia was invading Ukraine. And our church, our partner church in Romania needed help because refugees were just flooding their church. Our missions team had an emergency meeting that weekend and we decided to give half of our missions fund all to our partner church in Romania. We were able to give over $8,000 just in that one day. And you know what God did? He let us supersede our goal of $30,000 for the missions offering that year. Despite giving half of the original offering away. God can take little and do much. God can take what you have, student, elementary school kid. He can take what you have and he can do much with it. I love how the Bible uses kids. Just an eight-year-old kid, nine, ten-year-old kid had lunch. Here, Andrew, take what I have. So during this invitation, I, I, just a kind of a multifaceted invitation it's a time for you if you've prayed about what you're going to give I know I've prayed about what we're going to give as a family to the missions I put it in at the first service I want you during this song just to come up and just place it this is our, where we're going to take our missions off it's in a big travel case kind of representing us traveling all over the world to spread the gospel again if you have your regular tithes and offerings you can drop them at the bins at the exit doors but this is our missions offering Maybe you want to commit to giving, you know, X amount of dollars every month for the rest of this year so that we can support our and get to our goal of $30,000 above and beyond our tithe. 
All that's going to go to mission work. All that's going to go to things like the Golden Offering for Tennessee. It's going to go to places like Grace House. It's going to go to Lottie Moon. It's going to send missionaries all over the world. It's going to go to Annie Armstrong, North American Mission Board. It's going to go to places where there needs to be Jesus. It's going to place Bibles where there aren't Bibles. It's going to put Christians where they're not Christians. It's going to speak Jesus to places that they don't know about Jesus. Maybe, maybe God has stirred your heart. Maybe God is asking you, calling you, beckoning you to do something a little bit more than what you're doing right now. Maybe you just want to come and pray about that. Maybe you want to be like that little boy and just say, God, I, I don't know exactly what you're at and want me to do. But God, here I am. Send me. Here I am. You stand with me. Let's pray. God, we're going to sing a song called Follow You. And that's exactly what we want to do. So whether that's by really kind of steering our lives to maybe doing something different for you. If that's giving through this offering. If that's maybe today for the first time just inviting you to have a personal relationship with us. Lord, will you work and move right now during this invitation? God, when I say amen, I, I pray that people all over the room will move. Maybe there's a kid that has a dollar in his pocket. And he's thinking about what he's going to buy with it. Maybe, God, you've stirred their heart to give that to missions. Maybe there's a wealthy business person here that's doing really well in life. And maybe you're encouraging them to give to the missional effort so that we can see people changed, their lives changed for eternity. So God, will you just work and move right now among us? You know what our church is about to do. We're about to have a, a groundbreaking ceremony in the next two or three months for this new building. That's going to take money. We, we have partners in Romania and Idaho. We, we, we want to partner with Grace House and Hope Haven. We want to give to Lottie Moon and Annie Armstrong and all these. There's so much. And God, I, I'm not going to be overwhelmed by that. I'm going to be celebrating that, that we have that opportunity. And so God, may we be givers. May we be people who give the little that we have, place it into your hands and allow you to make it much. God, we love you. So will you work and move among us right now as we sing? Amen. Amen.
Hey y'all, my name is Rorick and I'm part of the team here at Leoma Baptist Church. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope that you are blessed and encouraged by the message and the music today. If you have any questions or need any info, please don't hesitate to check out our website or our Facebook page. From all of us at LBC, have a blessed week and we hope that you'll join us again.